Tonight on Sightings was the shocking murder of a teenage girl foretold in her own mother's mystery novel. I had more or less written the story of our own true life horror story. And psychic contact with the dead girl helped solve the crime. Then, from our UFO file, bizarre men in black stalk witnesses who have had UFO sightings. His eyes were extremely long. They literally wrapped around his temples. Startling new evidence and exclusive videotape reveals the sinister motives behind the MIB phenomenon. And a tragic car crash left this boy in a coma until a dog brought him back to life. He licked me. Then I woke up. At that point, it started to appear. They had large, dark eyes, claw-like hands. I began sensing and knowing and feeling. I do believe in life after death. I mean, I've been there. We have not scratched the surface of what the mind can do. It's a connection with the unknown. Welcome to Sightings. I'm Tim White. Although few psychic detectives have actually solved a crime, they can provide help to law enforcement and at least one important service to families of victims. One good lead from a psychic can often reopen a case where the police have reached a dead end. Psychic detectives have played an important role in the still unsolved murder of 18-year-old Caitlin Arquette. She was gunned down behind the wheel of her car in Albuquerque, New Mexico in July 1989. At first, police believed Caitlin was the victim of a random act of violence. But as investigators delved into the case, they soon realized there was nothing random about this murder. Even the most seasoned detectives were stunned by the strange twists and turns in this case. Psychic detectives provided intriguing leads, and eeriest of all, what appeared to be Caitlin's own attempts to reach out from the grave with information about her murderer. Crucial details allegedly from beyond directly paralleled those in a murder mystery written by her own mother. Under the pen name Lois Duncan, Lois Arquette is a successful mystery writer whose novels are filled with intrigue and terror. But there was no greater horror for Lois than discovering an uncanny link between details of her daughter's death and one of her own novels. I didn't put any connection together in the beginning at all. It wasn't until one thing after another began to occur that I suddenly realized that I had more or less written the story of our own true life horror story. And don't look behind you. I based the personality of my heroine, April, upon Kate. April was chased by a hitman in a Camaro. That book was published in June 1989. And in July 1989, Kate was chased down and shot to death by a trigger man in a Camaro. The most shocking thing of all to us was that when we read in the police file the Hispanic man who was arrested, his name was Mike, everybody called him Vamp. And in Don't Look Behind You, the hitman who chased down April was named Mike Vamp. As police probed Caitlin's brutal killing, they discovered the young woman had a secret life centered around her boyfriend, an alleged gang member believed to be involved in illegal activities. But investigators were unable to establish a direct link between either the boyfriend or his gang and Caitlin's murder. With the police department at a dead end, in desperation, Caitlin's mother turned to local psychic, Betty Minch. I rang the doorbell and this middle-aged woman answered the door and I looked at her. I had an instant feeling that I knew her. It wasn't that I'd met her. I had invented her. She was physically identical to Ann Summers, the psychic detective in my book, The Third Eye. Betty Minch considers herself a bridge between the living and the dead. Minch claims she can pick up messages telepathically while in a meditative trance, channeling the words of the dead through the keys of her typewriter. Usually I get a lot of color moving in my head. Then out of that, sometimes there will come maybe an image. And that's when the words seem to want to start pouring into my head. It was a very clear contact with Caitlin. She was right there. We had the idea that Caitlin was... Uh, in some kind of trouble, that there were other things going on that uh, the family wasn't quite aware of. Amazingly enough, 
it appeared that Caitlin was conducting her own murder investigation from beyond the grave. Some of the messages Betty Minch claimed to be receiving provided police with important new leads. Investigators soon received an anonymous tip from someone who'd seen one of the Crime Stoppers posters the Arquette family had placed around Albuquerque. Arrests were made that proved psychic Betty Minch had been dead right. She told us that the people who were arrested would have been driving a lowrider car, there would be two men in the front seat, one in the back seat, that there would be no eyewitnesses, but that arrest would be made because the men would be heard bragging, that our best help might come from somebody in the media, and she identified who that person would be, an investigative reporter named Mike Gallagher. But there was insufficient evidence to hold the three suspects, and they were released. Desperate for more evidence, Lois contacted Noreen Rainier, a well-respected psychic detective from Maitland, Florida. Working with a police sketch artist, Rainier attempted to create a drawing based on impressions she claimed to be receiving from Caitlin. I have to get their scent. I have to pick up their vibes. And somehow something personal that was on at the time of the crime gives me more information. I can pick up the scent of Katie psychically. During Noreen's session, Lois listened in on the phone from 900 miles away. I was sitting in Albuquerque knowing that Noreen was doing this, and I knew what the alleged trigger man looked like because he'd been arrested. I was trying to concentrate on Kate and I was saying, tell mother why you were killed. Was it a random shooting as the police think or was it something else? Send me a symbol, send me a message through Noreen Rainier. And the picture Noreen sent me was a sketch of Mike Vamp, the hit man in Don't Look Behind You, exactly as he appeared on the jacket of the British edition of that book. Everything was there, even the little scar between the eyebrows. It's like seeing something had been copied from the jacket. And I just started to shake. I couldn't stop shaking. Lois was shocked. Caitlin had been the only member of the Arquette family to see the new book jacket of the British edition. I, I, I just was very confused when she was telling me I got some man on a book check and I'm saying, what are you talking? But then it made sense that Kate was telling us it was a hit. It wasn't a random shooting. It was a planned killing. It wasn't random. And that's what we needed to know. Even more startling is a tape recording Noreen made as she supposedly channeled Caitlin's own description of her final hours. It's Noreen's voice, but Caitlin's words. I'm meeting somebody at a shopping center with a C in it. I went up the, the hill towards the north to that big place up there, to this, I want to call it the Desert Castle. There's just an important person there that I'm not supposed to know is there. I saw things that I shouldn't have seen. They had to make sure that there was no way I would ever talk. And this was a way of silencing me, my, my crime that was committed against me was to silence me. I'll never be silenced. Um, I'm not a bad person. I'm just young and I just was curious. I was a good daughter to your mother. Uh, I told you almost everything, almost. The incredible revelations from psychics Minch and Rainier prompted Lois to write, Who Killed My Daughter? And while the police have not yet solved Caitlin's homicide, Lois is encouraged by one psychic message Betty Minch believes she received. She said that Kate was sending a symbol, that the symbol was a wolf with a collar around its neck, its head jerked back, and the message was that Kate was very sure that the wolf who had been after her was soon to be caught and collared. The message was particularly significant to Lois, who originally entitled her book, one to the wolves. I couldn't explain any of this. All I could say to myself was, it's happening. Somehow it's happening. I have now come to believe that there must be some kind of transition point where it is possible for the dead to communicate with the living, perhaps when they have some very, very strong message to get across. I think Kate was killed because she was getting ready to tell the truth and she couldn't do it herself, and now she wanted me to do it for her. Lois Arquette is hoping police or psychic detectives will soon find out what horrible facts Caitlin knew and who stopped her from telling the truth. 
Coming up next, the frightening men in black phenomenon surrounding UFO contact. I'm not afraid of it because they haven't done anything to us yet. But what are their motives? There have been a few cases where individuals have died under mysterious circumstances. And later, what miraculous power brought this boy back to life? Some believe it was this dog. UFO insiders call them MIBS. That's an acronym for Men in Black. These Men in Black are one of the least known and yet most disturbing elements of the UFO experience. The phenomenon is reported worldwide and the stories that witnesses tell are remarkably similar. Seeing a UFO can be an exhilarating experience, but for some, that excitement soon turns into desperate paranoia. After a sighting, some witnesses report that they're threatened and harassed by mysterious thugs known to UFO investigators as MIBs, men in black. Just who are these men in black? Where do they come from? And why do they seem to be tracking and spying on those who've had a close encounter? There it was. It's a long, lit up, cigar-shaped object heading just over the roof rooftop. And then it moved out of sight and I went back home. And as I, when I got home, my wife said, you just got a phone call. And I said, a phone call? And it said that if you talk to the media about this, that your daughter will die. Immediately following a UFO sighting, the strange encounters with MIBs begin. They would walk in seemingly from nowhere be driving a car that may be uh, as old as 25 years. Uh, it would be immaculate, shiny, without a mark on it. The individual, in several cases, drove down to the end of the street, turned, the guy ran down after them, and they were completely gone. Men dressed in black, driving black cars, reportedly follow and sometimes even threaten UFO witnesses, and their motives appear to be strangely sinister. Witnesses driving home from having lunch at a restaurant have reported seeing a UFO. Before they could get home, they had cars waiting for them, warning them not to talk about the case. An investigator was approached by a very Saturn-looking man. He said, you know, people that look for UFOs sometimes find problems. There have been a few cases where individuals have died under mysterious circumstances. Reports of contact with MIBs seem to follow a definite pattern and occur throughout the world. One horrified witness was harassed by Bibbs after sighting a UFO near Toronto, Canada. And it was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. There was a knock on the door. I opened the door, and there was this very odd-looking man standing there. He had a photograph album in his left arm, and he didn't say anything for a full minute. He was about 5 foot 6. He was extremely thin. Uh, he had a slightly enlarged head. His face was a very strange olive hue. He wore a black turtleneck. He wore black pants. He was dressed entirely in black. His eyes were not oriental looking. They were extremely long. They literally wrapped around his temples. I have never seen eyes like that. Those eyes held me. They held my attention. They seemed to be boring into me. I felt very uh, intruded upon on a mental level by those eyes. The men in black cases, for the most part, have stirred up great amounts of paranoia. In many cases, these people have attempted to pass themselves off either as government agents or, in some cases, Air Force officers. At one point, the FBI was very heavily involved in tracking these uh, cases down and attempting to arrest someone, but no one was ever caught. Composite drawings created from witness testimony lead researchers to believe that MIBs could be aliens who have come to Earth to silence people who know too much about UFOs. In Russia, one witness reported being harassed and physically transformed by a MIB. Professor Paul Stonehill translated the Russian newspaper story about the woman's MIB experience. His touch was paralyzing. Mm -hmm. and left effects on, 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 upon the body of those whom he touched. His, his daughter, she became magnetic, and she would attract metals. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, the, 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 her hands became uh, sort of electric conductors. Her touch caused an electric shock. This is taking place now because the article is from April of 1992. MIB encounters are so disturbing 
Investigators fear many valuable witnesses might never come forward. Those who do believe their lives are in danger and claim MIB's surveillance intensifies when they contact the media. I think what has happened is they've gone to the black helicopters so i think that the men in black have just left their black cadillacs behind and taken up black helicopters these helicopters which have been described almost as a black ue type army helicopter with no numbers visible uh have appeared almost silently with with no uh helicopter noise that you associate with it Shirley and George Coyne are the Midwest directors of the Mutual UFO Network, MUFON, a UFO research organization. The Coins claim that they are being tailed by this silent black helicopter devoid of the necessary FAA identification numbers. This video shot by Shirley Coyne is the only footage of an alleged MIB encounter. Well, this is the day we had a meeting and the copter met us about halfway between Flint and Flushing and followed us all the way to our meeting place. I'm not afraid of them, because they haven't done anything to us yet. And I feel the, the more vocal I am, the less they're going to do. Is it possible that aliens with a secret agenda are harassing UFO witnesses? Or could MIBs be cleverly disguised humans trying to silence those who've had close encounters? Investigators continue to search for answers. It's just something that there is uh, uh, no explanation for. And by working on these cases and trying to use a, a scientific and investigative formula, we try to get to the bottom of them, but sometimes there doesn't seem to be a bottom. Coming up next, do animals have miraculous healing powers? Some say a dog brought this boy out of a near-fatal coma. He licked me, then I woke up. Researchers are just beginning to understand the complex nature of psychic ability. In their efforts to prove that ESP exists, the most startling evidence has come not from human subjects, but from animals. They found that family pets possess mystifying talents which conventional science can't explain. July 19th, 1989. I'll never forget the date. We were in a car accident. My daughter, Lauren, was killed in the car accident. I broke my neck. One David, one zero nine nine. And Neil sustained a traumatic head injury, and it put him in a coma for three months. Lucky is not a word Amelia Stortz would use to describe her son, Neil, on that tragic night three years ago. But Neil was lucky, lucky to be alive. He had suffered a very severe brain injury and he was in a very deep coma when he came to us. Neil survived, but doctors did not know if he would ever regain consciousness. He could have been in it forever. That would be a vegetative state. And what happens in a vegetative state is that their brainstem kind of kicks in and takes over their heart and lungs and um, their gastrointestinal system. And their eyes are open and they have sleep-wake cycles, but they don't have the ability to follow commands and they're not aware of their environment. In a seemingly hopeless case, where modern medicine can't provide all the answers, alternative forms of treatment may be called for. Since 1982, the Animal Assisted Therapy Program has been providing Houston area hospitals with animal companionship for patients who may not be responding to more traditional methods of health care. When patients have had brain injuries, they're oftentimes either comatose or very disoriented, and Having animals around, we know from studies, causes people's blood pressure to lessen and they become calmer. It kind of um, pushes the right button, so to speak, and makes it more likely that the patient's going to wake up. There are magical and miraculous things that happen all the time that defy medical science. I don't think that animals and humans working together is, is very explainable. And when you see something like this, it, it really is kind of magical. Neil had been in a coma for three months. So animal-assisted therapy was one long shot his family felt was definitely worth trying. When your child is laying there in a coma, you, you resort to just about anything, you know, you, you try anything. With all conventional treatments exhausted, the one remaining hope was to consult a rather unique specialist by the name of Rex. 
Rex was part of a regular visitation team as part of uh, um, our animal assisted therapy program and uh, he happened to uh, get up on Neil's bed and lick his face and um, within several hours after that Neil uh, began to speak. He licked me then I woke up. It's pretty amazing it's, but, but if you're going to credit anything or, or anybody why not um, credit Rex, the wonder dog? Was Neil's recovery a miracle? Or could it have been the result of a power animals possess that we do not fully understand yet? I mean, this was a really big tragedy, you know, to have a, a little boy that's in a coma and his little sister was killed and his mother was also injured in the accident. And it was just, you know, too much for most of us to even conceive. Neil had a lot of um, previous experiences with animals and really loved animals and, and uh, there's at least a hunch that it was a very normalizing experience for Neil and something that he could relate to instead of us uh, saying, open your eyes, close your hands, you know, yelling commands at him. It was really kind of neat that um, an animal kind of brought him around. The extraordinary and inexplicable bond between humans and animals. Researchers are just beginning to study it. But Neil Stortz has already found his proof in a magical friend named Rex. Rex is a hero because he woke me up. Thanks for joining us. For Sightings, I'm Tim White. Good night. Next time on Sightings. There were 15 who died. Has a New Jersey highway been cursed? And bizarre hauntings in California. And all of a sudden the CDs started flipping by themselves. On the next Sightings. Get ready for the summer season premiere of 90210. New episodes on a new night beginning this Wednesday. Followed by an all new Melrose Place. And tomorrow, real drama, real danger real excitement. You can find it all on Cops and Code 3. Coming up next, hidden video.